Derek Chisora from Derek Chisora. Let's talk about it. Like Derek as a fighter, he's come a long way. You know, he's actually one of the few fighters that has. I was actually in a boxing beats and rhymes video. He said, Derek has the old school fighter mentality, where literally he's just coming to fight. You know what I'm saying? And when I say he's coming to fight, and like there's been performances where obviously he's stunk the place out, not being, you know, not showing a lot of ambition. But nine times out of ten, Derek will come. You know, we, you rarely see Derek fight on the back foot. He'll come forward, no matter if he throws punches or not. He'll come forward and he'll and he'll he'll do what he can do. And considering Derek has, you know, had. I think it's what 10 11 maybe 10 losses 8 losses now you know and if you've got to remember guys he's fought as a pay-per-view fighter yes I know it was Daniel White as the pay-per-view fighter but he fought pay-per-view he made millions he knocked out Carlos Takam and this man has been through it all he's been knocked out cold he's been bashed up at, he's been bashed up every round and lost on points to Fury but actually and, and been stopped He's been cut, he's been bruised, he's been battered. He's been beaten by the Vitaly Klitschko's of the world. He's been beaten by David Hay. He's been beaten by the new generation, Dinian White. He's still here at 34 years of age. He's still a live contender. I mean, I, I would call him a contender, wouldn't you guys? If he beats Usyk, he's fighting for the heavyweight title. Derek's won everything but the heavyweight title. He's won the... Commonwealth, he's won the British, Europe. I think, did he win the European? I think he hasn't won the European, but he's won the Commonwealth British. He's won quite a few things, except the world title. And I think Derek's in a certain stage of his career where he's literally fighting is all he knows. Yeah, of course, the money's sweet, the titles would be sweet, but he ain't got nothing else to do. He's a fighter. Win, lose, or draw, Derek's the kind of guy, he's not really afraid to get knocked out. He says it in, in multiple interviews. I'd rather you knock me up cold than I lose on points. So he's either taking you out or he's taking, or you're taking him out. And he's got the style where he's now punching more crisp. He's not snapping his punches, he's punching, he's turning his punches, he's putting his body weight in it. And he's punching harder. He knocked out Spilker clean. Maybe the old Eric would have struggled, gone to points, but he knocked him out clean. He dug deep. He showed that he's one of the most resilient fighters that you're going to get in the heavyweight division. Very tough. Got, you know, the old school granite chin. The only way you're knocking him out is if you hit him on the right spot clean. Dylan was behind on the scorecards. And you know, even though he wasn't really landing clean at the head to Dylan, he was hitting Dylan's body, slowed him down, outworked him, rocked him a couple of times in both fights, got knocked out cold. Derek, Derek said it before, he said it recently. I can beat him. He definitely sees something in Daniel White that does not put fear in his heart. He's been knocked out cold. The guy knocked him out cold. Don Charles was, was next to him praying for his life. He knocked him out cold. And Derek's saying, listen, I know I can beat this guy. I'll, I'll go help Povetkin. I'll annoy him. I want that third fight to be pushing for it. Derek spotted Daniel many times. They've both agreed that Dillian took a knee or he got put down in one of the sparring. So Derek's definitely not afraid of him. He's fought him twice, went to war. First fight was controversial, split decision for Dillian. Many thought that Derek won. I thought Dillian edged it, but you could have given it to Derek. It was definitely meant to be an easier fight than it was for Dillian, that's for sure, because he was going life and death. Second fight, he was more experienced. You could see he was trying to p preserve his energy because of the Parker fight. He was definitely out on the 12th round in terms of energy. So he tried to preserve his energy and I thought it was a little bit too slow. And Derek was racking up, you know, Derek was racking up rounds and he got knocked out cold in the 11th. But then again, he gave Dillian a tough fight. And that, if that were to go to points and Dillian won by split decision, many would have just said it's the same as the first fight. You know, but it's all in hindsight. He knocked him out. He did his job. He was a, it was a very crisp punch, and he, and, he, and he worked it out well. But I just feel like every time Derek and Dillian fight, 
it's going to be a tough close fight and with what Derek's doing now and he's kind of employed this boxing slash coming forward fighting style he's not just coming forward and taking nicks but he's boxing we saw against David Price he was putting a heavy jab you know he was jabbing against Dillian in the second fight but he's putting a more specific jab jab he's more conscious that he needs to bubble with a bit more quicker and I just feel like given that Dillian White's form has kind of dipped since the Derek fight you know he didn't look that good against um, I mean he, he, he did well against Rivas but I feel like Derek is a better fighter than Oscar Rivas and if the dinner that showed up to Oscar Rivas would have gone life and death with, with Derek Chisora, definitely, 100%. You know, Rivas it was a bit one dimensional and he got exposed in the Dinian White fight. It was a great performance by Dinian, but the Marius Wack Dinian would have lost to Derek. And I know he was unfit and obviously the UCAD situation, but I just feel like anytime Derek and Dinian fight, they're going to go to war, man. And if Dinian. You know, I, I can't see the fight happening right now because there's no incentive for Dinian. Derek's lost. He knocked him out cold. I mean, if he made it pay-per-view, would it do him many buyers? It wouldn't do as good as much buyers as the second fight would it did. You know, the only way I can see it happen is Derek gets a big win. Let's say he knocks out Usyk, becomes mandatory. For some weird reason, Dinian doesn't get a shot at the WBC. He might think, let me fight Derek for the mandatory spot. Let me fight Derek for the man of spot. I beat Derek. And I become the mandatory for Joshua's belt. WBO. Or, this is a, this is a very far-fetched one. Derek beats Usyk. Becomes mandatory for Joshua. Beats Joshua. Gets all the belts. I mean, I'm sure Eddie will try and get a rematch. But let's say he doesn't. And Derek wants Dillian. Dillian fights Derek for all the belts. It could be, you know... It just, it's heavyweight boxing. That's what I'm saying, but guys, it's heavyweight boxing. Anything can happen. Derek's talking about going to the MMA. I mean, Derek's a very, conf he's a very random fighter. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Derek goes to MMA. I don't think he will, because now that David Hay is his manager, it's a more constructive career. He's making wise choices. He's being more specific. He's not just being rash and jumping into things. And that's, that's, that's testament to David. David was, Say what you want about David Hay. One thing about he did is he marketed himself right and he, and he made sure he got paid. He made sure that, he, that the promoters didn't take money off him. He didn't get shortchanged. He made every penny and squeezed every penny he could from the British public and made smart investments, smart deals. Derek, 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 you know, Dave was a rich file. And Derek, you could say, it's time for Frank, Frank Warren. He made silly choices and uh, with the Salmons. Probably lost money from them. So since he's been with Derek, since he's he been with David, he's probably made much more money than he has at the start of his career. I mean, Eddie, you know, Eddie's had to pay him big money. There's pay per view fights against Dillian. You know, stop David Price. But we still haven't really seen Derek up against a puncher since you get not when, when you get knocked out cold at that. You know, I know Derek's tough and everything, but everyone, you know, as humans, your punch resistance does go down. And we saw from the first round, he was rocked by Dillian. Testament to the Takan fight, because he took shots in the Takan fight. I'm telling you guys, watch that Takan fight back. He was taking nicks. And say what you want about Takan, whether he's a big puncher or not. He's a heavyweight. If you get hit from us a couple of times by a heavyweight, it's going to hurt. And you could see in the first round against Dillian that Derek's punch resistance was going down. You know, he got rocked, obviously got knocked out. Will, you know, I mean, Price landed flush on him, rocked him, but Derek was still okay. So Derek's still showing a good chin. He's still showing an iron jaw. Only been dropped twice, you know, or put down twice. David Hay and Dillian. It's a very stubborn fighter, very tough fighter. Um, and he'll give anybody problems, even Joshua. You know, the fit Derek would give Joshua problems. You know, I just don't think anybody, you know, maybe Fury's the worst for him stylistically, but I feel like Derek's just in a big, good stage in his career. And I feel like, I mean, I'm going to make a video closer to the time about the Usyk fight, but I give Derek, a, the longer the Usyk fight goes, I give Derek a better chance. You know, Usyk hasn't fought since Chad Witherspoon, which was, I think, last year. And do you even count that as a proper fight? He was injured multiple times for the attacking fight. Is Usyk trying to pile on too much muscle? Is he going to slow his feet down? 
I've been saying to a lot of people that the only way he could beat Derek conclusively is with his feet. I don't see him knocking out Derek, but you never know. I just don't see it happening. Derek's too, too old school, too smart, and too tough, I think, at this stage to get knocked out by, by an Usyk. But then again, David Hay at Cruiserweight knocked him out. David Hay was a Cruiserweight, really. He was light in that fight, and he knocked Derek out. But does Usyk have that kind of power? Nope. He wasn't really powerful at Cruiserweight, so I would already be powerful at Heavyweight. So you can train your punches, I suppose. I'm going to make a video on why I think the vulnerabilities for both guys because I'm still not 100% sold. I mean, it's heavyweight. Everyone can not, you know, body shots are tough, but can Usyk take a body shot? It stops any amateurs to the body. It hurt to the body against Hunter. It's hurt to the body against other fighters. And we know Derek can hit to the... We know Derek is a body puncher. We know Derek, if he can't land upstairs, which I think Usyk would be slick enough to, to avoid, if he lands downstairs, it could be an issue for Usyk, maybe. Yeah, especially if he keeps piling on muscle and fat to the body will that hurt his body more will it make him more vulnerable don't be surprised if he gets hurt to the body against Derek don't be surprised guys I said it here Derek goes to the body a lot you know very accurate to the body as well but let me know what you guys think about Derek man he's in a new stage of his career you know he's talked about winning the rematch for Dillian which you know you know, if you think about the way boxing has been and how it is right now, it could happen. He's helping Povetkin. I think the Povetkin and Dillian White fight an interesting fight. I'll do a fight a review about that close to the time. But let me know what you guys think. I'm out.